Well, welcome to the George Rockle Schmidt Show. It's that time of week again-ish. Put a banger in your mouth and burn it down. How are you doing, Damien? <laughs> very well, thank you very much. Good. Appreciate the concern. I'm not really concerned. It's just like you're prodding to speak, I guess. Oh, yes, that, that's exactly what I'm like. Yeah, There's one way you could describe me. It's uh, always braying for attention. Always calling me up, always screaming down the phone at four o'clock in the morning. I'm in Swinton! <laughs> Tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm good. Just but not at a specific thing. <laughs> oh, I'm not speaking to you. I'm just holding the phone up as I'm shouting at fucking strangers in the street. I want you to know that I'm pursuing this, you know, outside of you. you you're fed up with the harassment. I get that. That's, you know, I cross some boundaries, all right? Whenever Damien calls me up, I can always tell a number of things. I can always tell it's on a 3310. I can always tell by the echo and the reverberation. It's in a very small caravan in the middle of a field in Wales. And I can always tell that he's making love to someone, but the phone's quite far away, and it's just Damien going, Look at me! Look at me! Don't look at me! <laughs> Have you ever heard anyone having, having sex? Um, probably, but I'm just too fucking deaf to notice. Apparently, um, my girlfriend has... Has, compla- has sex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she tells me there's a couple downstairs uh, fornicate on a frequent basis, but I've never really clocked it. Um, and she's cl- she's figured this out, but she doesn't hear she doesn't hear the uh, hear the woman. All she hears is the dude. And apparently she she acted it out for me. And she, she's like, I wasn't quite sure what it was, but all I could hear was. <laughs> so you do your own stunts. <laughs> Kind of like that, yeah. Uh, well, well, okay, they, well, that's interesting. I remember someone who knew a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist practiced tantric sex, which is not coming. And I just don't get it. Seems kind like, of, that's, kind that's of that's productive. <laughs> yeah. I fuck with ruthless Germanic efficiency. Start to finish in the two minutes flat. I'm very proud of myself. It frees like, me up for all kinds of other activities. It's like, yeah, dude. Other people practice that as well. It's called foreplay. <laughs> Right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Well, uh, another thing I was going to say was I remember I went to a party once. I was about 16. You know, one of those, one of those dirty parties. It was all right. And <laughs> one of those sexy parties. Uh, one of my friends went into someone's parents' bedroom with their girlfriend to have sex. And it was, they went in and everyone was like, whoa. And then it was just like five minutes of absolute silence. <laughs> of course yes if that, that was exactly what it would be as, as a fucking teenager jesus and i but i just like the idea that you know he he had already come or something earlier that day and she was just giving him like a really like really angry hand job you know it wasn't <laughs> really mashing it <laughs> yes sort of Grinding you know they weren't, they, neither of them were enjoying it both of them were like come on come on just no if you don't slow down don't slow down. You're just going to make it... No, we both want to be out of here. We've already committed. They're outside. They're fucking hollering, all right? They reckon they know what we're up to. We, we've got to do something. It's, it's humiliating if we just fucking sit here in silence for the next 10 minutes. Oh, I also... Remi- you- <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, it's you know kind of fair play. I mean, it's, it was, I guess it's one of the yeah one of those te- those parties, right? So he had quite a few drinks. You know, he's getting into the spirit of things, but he, he's he's nervous. He hasn't been doing this too long at this point, right? He said this was around about seventeen, eighteen, right? Um, uh, yeah, I guess he was. About I imagine time, he's yeah. I imagine he's just a kid and he's a little bit too fucking nervous. So yeah, he's really he's like he's committed. He's like, please just don't stop, okay? I, I have to, not now. I'm already. I can't not be doing. I can't be dealing with problems like this at this at this age already. I'm. Uh, if I can't do this now, my life is pretty much over. I'm already, already an old man. Also, also, it has nothing to do with it, but when has that ever stopped me? I remember afterwards saying, oh, uh, uh, Abdullah, where's your girlfriend? Or whatever this guy's name was. And he, he said, his girlfriend came in, as I said that, and they both laughed and went, ha, 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 oh, no, we're not going out. And I was like, okay, well, is that ridiculous for me to assume that? Am I the only one who believes in true love anymore? Don't you know about the casual sex, Mr. George, that all the kids are doing it these days? Have you ever heard about the casual sex, Mr. George? No, Do I don't think there. so. So, Damien, have you ever seen Mrs. Doubtfire before? <laughs> to everyone's surprise, I have, in fact, seen Mrs. Doubtfire, but I will also uh, amend, I also follow it up by saying it was 20 years ago and I remember nothing, so 
Uh, yeah. There will be no competent discussion as per usual. I today. mean, well, yeah, I see what you're doing because you, Damien, really listened to it two hours ago. But, Don't fucking stitch me up, you bastard. But there will be no competent discussion about it today. So, <laughs> so there is a kernel of truth in what he said. There is a kernel. He's not of talk, truth. talking consummate fucking shit all the time. Well, I, I watched it about three weeks ago when we when I first said to you, "Oh, we should watch Mrs. Doubtfire," and together. F- <laughs> <laughs> together. <laughs> Fuck me, can I remember anything that happened in it? <laughs> well, what, I guess one thing that I... Well, there's many things I want to talk about, but the premise is nuts. Um, it, it, yeah, I, I'll, yeah you, you, you go for it. Well, uh, I, as I'm sure everybody knows, uh, Robin Williams plays a, a man who is divorced by his very successful and long-suffering wife. Uh, <laughs> all the write-ups are like, after a brutal divorce, it's not brutal. She basically says, get the fuck out. Stop fucking around. Get a job. Get the fuck out. And he does. I mean, they still talk to each other. I don't think that's a brutal divorce. You know, no one, no one says, oh, he touched the kids, therefore I get custody. And it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it could have been a, mess of, a messy fucking custody battle. She was prepared to go there. There was a fire in her eyes. Well, they go through a divorce, and, and he decides that um, the access that he has to his kids, which is something like, you know, once every two weeks, it isn't enough. So he decides that he will dress as a nanny, or a female nanny. He will not only wear the clothes of a female nanny who's in her 50s, Mrs. Doubtfire, he will also wear prosthetic makeup put on by Harvey Fierstein. And then he pretends to be this nanny and gets close to the kids, even though they think that this person is someone else. They don't realise it's their dad. And then uh, Pierce Brosnan comes on the scene to woo Robin Williams' ex-wife. Robin Williams doesn't like it, right? And then, then he's exposed, and that's kind of it. There's not much else. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I, it's, it's simple. It's very simple. It's very kind of schmaltzy family stuff. And you've got this kind of wonderfully fucking syrupy score throughout all of it. And there's loads yeah. of these kind of like, ah, oh, moments. But... I did, yeah, as you say, the, the the underlying, the core, you know, the core conceit here is that he is a man that's infiltrating his family, <laughs> well, you know, without their prior knowledge or consent. <laughs> well, right. Well, well, what what I want to say, what 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 I really liked about it, and what, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it was because if you look at a trailer, it almost manifests itself in your mind as Robin Williams is this guy who gets divorced. And his wife doesn't understand him, but she's not a bitch, but she doesn't understand him. But he can't get close to her. But then Pierce Brosnan comes on the scene and he's a piece of shit and he's going to take everything away from Robin Williams and all of this. And Robin Williams is the good guy and Pierce Brosnan's the flash new stepdad. And it's this battle, of, you know, along those lines. And actually, the truth is, is Robin Williams is the baddie. Mm-hmm. Pierce Brosnan is doing nothing wrong. Pierce Brosnan is this good-looking, successful man who's interested in a woman with two kids. Fuck! Yeah, what a fucking he's... hero! Yeah, and he seems he has like what's wrong with him? Exposes having like legitimately good intentions. Yeah, and like he, one yes. thing that kind of blew my fucking mind in that restaurant scene is that Robin Williams, on top of all this. This shit show that he's he's got himself into. He conspires to poison the man. Prior to that moment, Piers Brosnan admitted to having like quite a severe allergy like ten minutes prior, right? Yes. And then he jumps on that with both fucking feet. He does not he does not miss a single fucking beat. Immediately Murder, fucking assures himself, fucking bombards the fucking kitchen and just spikes the food. I mean it's insane. And he has this realisation, oh my god, I might I might have just killed that man. Says, yeah, well done, you fucking lunatic. It's not like I don't sympathise with the Robin Williams character, but it's much more the case that I enjoy it because Robin Williams is funny. The actual person he's playing, I don't really like. No, not at all. Not really. I mean, the reason that he gets divorced is uh, his wife asks him to look after the kids she has a real stressful job and a proper job, you know, where you have to fucking sign things and things like that. Oh, fucking up papers. Oh, yes. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> she gets home and instead of looking after the kids, the, the street is, full, is filled with um, overflow parking because there's a party going on and there's like a band playing and the, the kids are running on the fucking ceiling and everything's a tip and Robin Williams is there. He's just shot some heroin in his arm. And that might be her hyperbole, I can't remember. And <laughs> no, and he, there was a horse there. That was its horse. 
Small horse, pony. Ho- okay, yes. So I get, I get mixed up because of the famous expression, chasing the horse. So he's chasing the horse. <laughs> chasing the pony. All right. Ch- ch- sorry. Chasing, chasing the Clydesdale. Chasing, well, chasing the pony sounds like he's trying to have a shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's chasing, he's chasing the shy horse. And, all right, and sorry. Like, I'm Robin Williams is, ass. is he's gathered all the children in, in in the living room. Right, there's thirty, forty kids there. And he's, I found him there in the middle of all this. He was chasing the pony, trousers around his ankles. Immediately, we had to get the police around. What did he expect us to do? You can't stay here, man. Kids, kids, look. I don't have a proper job, and I'm married to someone who does in a massive house in the most expensive city in America. Let's let's not appreciate this at all. Let's fuck everything up for my oh. long-suffering wife. I really pity her. Oh, it's suffer- one of the things. That, I mean, this is a really petty gripe, and I'm not holding this against the movie or anything. <laughs> but it, it's, it does. It suffers from that thing that all kind of American media suffers from is when these these down on their luck, you know, characters. You know, you see them in their fucking what's supposed to be their fucking dilapidated, oh, crappy yeah, fucking yeah. homes. It's like and the best standard of living I'd ever have. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's always a fucking mansion. It's always fucking huge. She, I mean, she, maybe it's only one floor. It's it, it's it's part. It's you know, yeah. an apartment complex. Oh, isn't that so? Isn't that that's that, that's peasant? Yeah, you know, you're, peasant dwellings. You're, you're right. I mean, she visits his house, and the thing is, is it's it's a, a big living room. And a bedroom, and a kitchen, and a bathroom. Like he lives on his own. I think for San Francisco, that's pretty good. Yeah, that is. That he is has a bedroom. Like good. a lot of people fucking live on in the stairwells, don't they? I don't know. That's something else that really fucked me off as well. Like when the first time that the wife arrives at the house to pick up the kids, she comes there early, and she like fucking barges through the fucking door. Now, if I was in that pos- position, right? If I had been divorced and this woman had like was trying to steal my kids from me, yeah, because that, that's and definitely she's thinking, what's happening. And uh, she's trying to protect them from you, Damien. Of course, yeah. yeah. If protect she you from thinks your that hands. I'm not, I, I'm not going to fucking lose my shit for the sake of you know this custody battle. She is sadly mistaken. If she turned up and helped open the door to my house without my permission, Shotgun. I would chase her out with a fucking baseball bat. Yeah, I'd go fucking ape shit. Yeah, fuck that. that... Another minor gripe. 10 p.m. is Damien time. Pers- <laughs> If it was no, if that, that's a house that she doesn't live in, that's my fucking yeah, I agree, point. I agree. I agree. Oh, fuck that. Hmm. Yes. Sorry. I mean, that's it's not relevant, but you know, I just had to fucking get that out. I, that's. Do you do you see people? Do you see what divorce does? <laughs> <laughs> they used to love oh, each other, and now they're barging in on each other, masturbating, I assume, and chasing the pony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna get that. I think uh, I'm gonna get that in the in the rotation. I like chasing the pony. I'm gonna make that a thing. I think <laughs> at work. I mean, you know, not a fucking. It's not <laughs> on a t-shirt. Life's a bitch. Fuck this chasing shit. A, let's chase a pony. <laughs> let's chase a pony. <laughs> and you have a nice little, uh, you have a nice little uh, picture on the back. Two guys holding hands, trousers around their ankles. They're both shitting as they together <laughs> as they walk off into the sunset. It's beautiful. Harmonious. There's a little speech bubble coming from both of them, and it says, "We're not touching, but this is a sex act." <laughs> no, no, it's it's a it's a mantra for positive uh, for a positive outlook and positive you know positive living. I can't yeah. sell it with stuff like that. So you know, I'm sorry, chasing not, the pony. If you're flushing, thinking. you're getting really the dead waste. You know, you're getting rid of that which you don't need. It's, you know, almost like shedding skin, but not just taking shit. But you know, waste. <laughs> Oh, you you know you, you fucking yeah I do it. yeah I, I, that's the thing that's the thing that, that we've coined this expression which should never really have a definition. Hmm. What were you oh, doing? So are you saying the, I'm, I'm spoiling it by trying to fucking paint it too clearly? I should leave I, it a little bit more kind of nebulous. A little I, think more you can, I think I think you can paint it clearly. I think it has many definitions, right? I think it's <laughs> it's like the it's it's like the os- op- opposite of the Eskimo word for snow. You know they have eighty words for snow. Well, <laughs> we have one phrase for everything. What were you doing last night? Chasing the pony. Oh, were you? But I thought you were going to do some work. Yeah, I, I did it, but I was chasing the pony after I was chasing the pony. <laughs> you know, and then, then when I finished, whew, that's when I really chased the pony. A pony that, uh, pony's, as, pony's as, better than horse because you could catch a pony. <laughs> <laughs> they do have tiny legs, yeah. <clears throat> and then, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll there we've got, a, we, we've got another phrase coined that right there. Like, fuck you, catch a pony. <laughs> 
Or you, where's your fucking pony? Oh, well, uh, that's it. I mean, do we have anything else to say about Mrs. Terrifying? We were, we were talking about the children's party in, all, in like, the second scene of the movie. Is that the, what we, the, the we tie the, off our discussion? The children's party where someone called someone and went, I'm having a kid's party. Uh, it's in my house, so it can't be too big. Um, but obviously, you know, we need a goat. That, you know, that's, yes. that's clear. We need a fucking goat. I, I, I love the idea of, um, a, what is it, a mobile petting zoo. Is that a thing? Is that a thing in America, or is that it, just fucking for the movie? I guess if it's going to be a thing, it would only be a thing in America, or specifically the West Coast, right? But also, how could that be a thing? Who would want that? Who wants a fucking goat in their house? I don't, I don't reckon it's like that. I reckon there's like an urban farm, right? Because there's San, San Francisco, right? A lot yeah. of progressives there, I, I, so I've been told. I reckon there's like an urban farm, like, what was it? It's a good life, but the American equivalent, right? He's on his way. Uh, he's on his way to the school to pick up the kids. He sees this. Remembers his son son's birthday. Has this fucking has this like flop sweat. Jumps out the fucking car, tearing off his fucking shirt, and he just barges in. Doesn't say a word, but just shrieks, shrieks at the top of his voice. Doesn't make any eye contact with anyone working there. Just barges straight up to the goat and grabs it by the fucking legs, almost like a headlock, and just marches out. No one thinks for a second to engage. Because they know that they will lose like a limb if they do. Because absolutely he's, fucking terrifying. He's off to get he's his kid it. a cowboy laser robo geek. He has failed, just like the Frasier. That if if anyone ever remade it, they need to change two things. They need to have the whole thing, not the whole thing at the beginning, not a petting zoo, but a quest to get Super Turbo Turkey Puncher three. <laughs> and they need they need to have the moment where he dresses up as Mrs. Doubtfire for the first time and goes to his old house, his wife's house, they need to have it, so he rings the doorbell, his wife opens the door, and immediately goes, what the fuck are you doing, Robin? Because <laughs> there's yeah. no way you wouldn't know that he was your, your yeah, ex-husband, I mean, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, like, what's really bizarre is that when she picks up the kids and she's got this, was it the monogram or whatever it is for the, for the ads that she's going to run in the local paper, because... The, the, monogram, the monogram... Not monogram. What would they call it? She's got like a co- she's got copy for uh, for the ad that she's going to run in the paper, right? R- okay, yeah, sure. Um, and uh, he immediately he's like he had, there's this weird look in his eye where he's all in, in that second he's had this kind of epiphany. Yeah, he knows exactly what the next three months of his life are going to be, <laughs> like perfectly formulated. Because he does not miss a fucking beat. Immediately changing the phone number so no one can contact her, right? Yeah. And Pris proceeds to... He, he lays the groundwork. He knows he's going to infiltrate, so he makes himself the most viable option by just ringing her every day, presumably dozens of fucking times, and just harasses her. And screams down the phone, and it's always like, I can tell it's you, Robin. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I'm I mean, calling him Robin. I know it's not actually Robin Williams... I know he's playing a character, but I can't remember what that character's called. And fuck me, I'm going to look. I it mean, up. that's kind of par for the course for our movie discussions. I think. Uh, yeah, I think I think you've like foolishly referred to Pierce Brosnan as Pierce Brosnan, not you know, Piercey Bond. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bond. So, what do you think about Pierce Brosnan? Yeah, I kind of I I thought it was all right, but I just. I, I was just, I was really hoping he'd kind of go full taffin at any point when he kind of susses out Rod, Robin Williams and he just shrieks, well, maybe you shouldn't be living here. <laughs> Have you seen that? No. Oh, if you, yeah, if you, if you just look up Piers Brosnan taffin, you'll find it on YouTube. It's just a clip of some of the best acting you'll ever see on screen. I've never seen the movie. I've just seen this clip. What's taffin? Is that, uh, is that the movie about... Making taffy. I've no, I, I've no idea what it is. I just know it. I, th- I think it's called taffy. Let me just fucking have a quick look. Which do you prefer, taffy or toffee? Right in the comments. But see, I'm English, so I'm not familiar with taffy at all. A slightly stereotypical thing to call a Scottish person. <laughs> Man, no, I thought that was was it Irish. I don't know. I kind no, of I thought. Oh, okay. I, I don't whenever, know. Whenever, whenever I think of stuff like that, I think better not say taffy. Oi, gels. <laughs> Piers Brosnan Taffin, taff 1988 Okay What goes on in this town is none of your business As long as I'm living here it is Then maybe you shouldn't be living here Well that's easily fixed Good editorial decision to keep on her when he says that <laughs> is, he called, is it called Taffin because he's got Taffin in his mouth? I have absolutely no idea. I don't know anything about it. I don't know. Oh, well, hang on. Yeah, he seems to be kind of... 
Is he trying to do Marlon Brando or something? He's kind of, He's got some kind of mass in his mouth which shouldn't be there. That's what happens when you go blind. <laughs> it's just two hours of Pierce Brosnan in that fucking up uh, in that armchair slinging a cane around. Absolutely nothing else. I've never seen it. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Okay. I can't. I don't know how I came across this, but hmm. it doesn't look like something I'm going to have any enjoyment watching. I don't think it's that bad. I won't do early Pierce Brosnan unless it's a lawnmower man. And that was years after this. That was like five years after this, wasn't oh, it? Was it? I thought Lawnmower Man was 1993. Hang on, let me have a look. 1992, The Lawnmower Man. Of course, The Lawnmower Man was directed by everybody's favourite director, Brett Leonard. Of course. Who would go on to direct Feet. Yes. When I found that out, I I was beside myself. It almost made perfect sense. You look at these people and you just think, are you trying not to progress? What are we I'm looking sorry, at? Was that, was that just, a bit too serious? Oh, I'm scrolling down. I'm just seeing all these videos for lawnmowers now, and yeah, it does really feel like you're kind of you're you are kind of opposed to the march uh, march of human progress. What, look what, at me! I'm riding my lawnmower backwards. Wow, that guy has fucking three films in pre-production. Yeah, sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> We've established that uh, Pierce Brosnan is even more brilliant in this movie. Than in uh, other movies, which he's also brilliant in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is the gold standard when it comes to acting. And I say that without you know without any hyperbole. I mean that absolutely serious. I'll back that up one hundred percent. Well, saying that, I've never seen Harvey Fierstein or Firestein in a scene where I haven't enjoyed the scene in any movie. I'm not saying he everything he's in is good or anything like that, but I just think he's hilarious. I'm not that familiar um, with some of the other stuff that he's been in. I recognise the voice. I think of well, he's his... Carl to me. I know everyone talks about Lenny and Carl, but he's the other Carl. You do your job. It's easy to get that voice. You just have to eat a loose parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the sort of parking lot that hasn't been tarmacked. I mem- remember getting like this really, really horrible, horrible chest and throat infection a few years back, and I wanted to, I wanted to like remain sick for for the rest of my life because I ended up with this fucking gravelly as fuck voice, and for the first time ever in my life, I could stomach the sound of my own voice. I loved it, but alas, things got better and I became nasally again. I'm Harvey Firestein, and I'll spit your wife in two. No, I can't do it either. It just ends up like that. <laughs> Precious. Oh, my, my name is Harvey Princeton. I like those eyes. Well, another thing that I was thinking of mentioning briefly on the uh, face-off appreciation video we did, or podcast we did, um, and it's the same in Mrs. Doubtfire, and one of the things I like about 90s movies, as well as them actually being fun and having the balls to be fun, uh, one thing I really like about them is the women in them are completely normal looking. Robin Williams' wife in this, she's a good looking lady, you know, Sally Field, she's a good looking lady, but she's not, like, unattainably beautiful. Mm-hmm. She looks like a normal person. Whereas I, th- I feel like now, not with everything, but with more and more stuff, uh, people are very, very airbrushed, and uh, the women are very, very airbrushed. Yeah, they, uh, I would imagine they would cast someone who doesn't look like they could possibly have pushed three be, children. Be out a mother, of them. yeah, yeah. Is it three kids? Is it? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or well, one of them is Matilda. She doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> if they made Face Off now, they'd have got fucking uh, some gorgeous actress. And again, I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't have gorgeous actresses, but it just seems like they're everywhere. No, but you in, know, in, these... in every role for like a mom, a mom will be gorgeous mm. in all of this. Well, everything needs to be like potential whacking material, as I'm sure you you know appreciate. I guess yeah. they were a little bit more relaxed in the nineties. Yeah, no, I think they missed a trick. I think they should have made made Mrs. Datfire gorgeous, <laughs> like even bigger tits. No, I, th- I think I think if they made it now, one of the ways they could improve it would be. If they made it now, if Robin Williams was still alive, it's Robin Williams. It's a shot behind him. It's just the back of his head. He puts on a wig, cut to, shot of his face. It's Eva Mendes. <laughs> but it's his voice doing the Mrs. Doubtfire voice. You could have like a comic moment where he steps out from behind the paper shade and Eva Mendes comes out, but she's still got really like a hairy fucking arms. She's like, oh, fancy that. Cut, goes back in. Yeah, you could easily play that out. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So what's Eva Mendes up to, I wonder? I think she likes oh, oh, producing uh, John oh, Wick. 
That that's right. Yeah. Um. Nothing. Nothing. She's producing John Wick. Are you fucking kidding? Yeah, we watched it, and it, it, she was like, it, she was like, e, not EP, but she had a produ- production credit right at the end. We, yeah, as we were like just barely hanging on at the end of that movie. Well, it says here that the only thing she ever produced was something called Live! Exclamation mark. Exec producer. So you you clearly full of shit. I'm not full of shit. That's so all right. Let me just have a quick look. Okay, now. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, Eva Mendes was pretty big a few years ago, and she's not acted in four years apparently. Maybe she's gone off, gone off to have children. They mm. tend to do that. I'm so I'm told. Yes, I've never forgiven Linda Florentino for having a life. <laughs> <laughs> Either Fiorentino. That's yeah. Obviously, I. Obviously, I'm being completely serious by, you know, by getting her name right the first time. I'm going to... Yes. Um, my th- computer started getting really sluggish. Okay. Do you mind if we just pause okay. it and I say... No! Yes, yeah, so we were talking no. about uh, Linda Pizza. I believe that's... Linda what... Pizza? Why do, you, why do you call her Linda Pizza? Well, you know why. We've just discussed it, but for the benefit of, uh, of our, our listeners, I will elaborate. Um, I used to read it as um, Linda... I, I used to love pizza. <laughs> I was just eating pizza at the time. I was watching tw- uh, Twelve Monkeys with a pizza, and I just Linda pizza. I couldn't distinguish the two. I was uh, I was just this hey, state of euphoria. Damien, uh, you like her? Who's your favorite actor? Oh, John Pineapple. <laughs> Get out, <Stop>. that. Damien. <laughs> the pineapple says, "Yeah, Linda pizza. Well, well, what's a what's a Florentino pizza then? Uh, it's spinach and egg. It's it's what kind of yeah? You just you just." Fucking drop a, eggs on a pizza and kind of hope for the best. That's not a pizza. That's it. It's a pizza. It's total pizza. You just get you you get you, you can't have you fucking egg loads. on a pizza. A pizza. You throw loads. You just you, you you take like a half dozen right creative eggs and you just sling it in a stone bake. Then throw tomatoes at it. There you go. It's a fucking Fiorentina pizza. That sounds, sounds like it. sounds like a Look, I, I, badly done big disc of French toast. No, no, no. Well, see, I, I, I've told, I've told you this. Um, I've elaborated. This I've told you this. Of, right, right. I work with a lot of Italians. They tell me that this is, you know, how their mamas used to make it, as they say. This, that's that's authentic. All right. Oh, yeah. So don't fucking question me. I've got insider knowledge. All right. Oh. Yes. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I'm not really questioning it. I'm more saying that that is disgusting. <laughs> Ah, I see. Okay, it's more yours is more in the realm of opinion rather than okay. Fine, fine. I can, I can, I can deal with that. I'm an adult. But you know, people say stuff like that, like, "Oh no, this is how my mum used to make." Like you hear fucking South Koreans say stuff like, "No, kim kimchi has to be made with hot dogs and spam." And it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's because your country was devastated after the Second World War and you had no food. You fucking idiot. It doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I rather suppose so. Yes, I mean Korean War. Yeah, <laughs> I've never, but I, I seriously have never heard of that eggs. So it is that eggs on a hard, pizza, hard boiled eggs. Yeah, it's just hard. Bo- yeah, well, it's not. It's boiled. It's not boiled. It's it's baked. It's baked egg. Once I asked for a pizza from somewhere where they obviously weren't very used to doing vegetarian pizza. So I, they gave I'm, me potato salad. I, I, I I'm not s- a vegetarian. But I, sometimes I like veggie pizza, right? I like, like, peppers on it. I like sun-dried tomatoes and stuff like that on my pizza. And they fucking gave me this pizza with... And it, all, all it was was pizza, tomato sauce, or tomato paste, cheese, and then all, An the, entire... all, the, all the fucking veggies were, were some onions, fine, and, like, two whole carrots. <laughs> Who puts carrot on a pizza? I thought you were going to say, you know, they served me this pizza, you know, tomato sauce, thin crust, just thought I like it, and an entire pig's trotter in the middle. Well, that would have been better. At least that would have been meat. Well, if it's cooked properly, yes, it's, it's, it's delightful. But uh, otherwise, it's just going to be, it's just pallid and hairy and, you know, very, very sickly. It's not what isn't you want pe- from your veg pizza. Isn't pizza a con? I mean, out of all the fast food you can get, it's an absolute con, isn't it? You know, you can go and get some chicken wings, and yeah, they're, they're fucking garbage, and they're pumped full of water and everything, but you spend, like, nothing on chicken wings. You, you spend uh, just a, a small amount of change on some chicken wings, and that's meat. With a pizza, it's like 20 quid for a pizza. All it is is bread and tomato paste and cheese. Yeah, it is a bit of a con. I mean... And it's always like the meat you get is always like a shaving of meat. You know, you you go on these, you go to these places, and it's like, oh, it's uh, it's five quid for extra meat, and then, and then that's like, oh, you get five pieces extra of greasy fucking cheap pepperoni. 
<laughs> oh no, 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 no! You get the what's worse is you get the, you can get the uh, much more infuriating. Sorry, is you get the shavings of like the more artisanal hams like Speck or Parma. Speck, and you're supposed to be fucking. You're grateful for it. You have to be grateful for it. You get no, nowhere near. It's, it's there's nowhere near enough of it to be like properly satisfying. If you want to get want to get meat, if you want value for money, get a kebab. <laughs> mm. I didn't really do kebabs of a night out. I'd always end up in Subway. And would that's, you? And that's most my. That's my glaring. Uh, what would you call that? Fucking plug for this week. Subway. Yes. Subway. I went Better into than a, pe- pizza's a fucking con. Was I with a cheap you? Chicken sandwich. Was I with you when I went into that Subway in Ealing and they didn't have any bread? <laughs> 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 and Sounds like something I'm, I'm probably present for, but not present for. And they just had wrap, you know. They just they just had wrap. <laughs> so I said, okay, all right. Well, I'll have a, a meat wall marinara on shit wrap, please. And the guy was like, yeah, no problem. And then it was a, it was a late night, and it was full. And the girl behind me said, oh, what's it called? Shit wrap. Oh, I'll have this on shit wrap. And I, <laughs> I left that I left that subway, and everyone thought that this thing was actually called shit wrap. <laughs> I had made my mark. Yeah, there were no more mountains oh, no, left to no. conquer. So at Subway, they always say like, "Do you want it on on honey honey roast bread? Do you want it on Italian bread, or would you like it on shit wrap?" That's what they do now. It's just, <laughs> just how they call. No one ever thinks like, "Oh, the word shit is in that word." The word shit is in that word. It's not written on any of the materials. It's just conditioning. It's it's, it's kind of it's it's kind of infected their you know their corporate structure because you know other brands other branches other franchises they are they're subject to the same behavior they, everyone they, they, no one knows why you know they just know that that's what you do it's called shit rap but technically the t is silent shit rap <laughs> shit rap uh, you know what else i've seen on a pizza as well which i do approve of chili chili yeah when you say peppers or like just no, like chili, like beef, like, like Texas chili. Uh, there's, there was one like take cheap fucking takeaway pizza place that I used to love, like, um, and I'd always it was pizza experts, and I always did like this thick, thick crust, oily as fuck kind of garbage, <laughs> fucking pisshead pizza, right? And they had one which I would kind of go for, and it was it was just it was basically just chicken curry on a large disc of bread, and it was. Fucking marvellous. I remember once as well, we were walking around London and you burst out laughing and it, you were looking at a telephone box and it was uh, it was advertising Domino's and they had a new pizza and this pizza had a wiener in the crust. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know that we're at the end of this cycle of decadence. There's a wiener and pizza crust. It can't get oh, no, it. It's I've, orgies I've in the streets seen... now. No, no, I think I've seen worse. Um... I think again. I think it's probably still dominoes, but they had a special type of crust which had like it was they they, they pressed the crust, so it had like these like dips in it. Yeah, and they would fill that with with like dips, like che- like liquid cheese and something that's supposed to be something green, which they were presenting as guacamole and stuff like that. Absolutely fucking disgusting. Have you heard about this thing about people drinking coffee out of um, scooped out avocados? It, what in the skin? I presume. Yeah, or- in the skin. Yeah. No, I've never heard about that. What, You've never what, heard about what, that? No. Well, I mean, what, what's what's the benefit of that? It's just... um, it proves to people around you that you're a cunt. <laughs> well, I, I could have. Ma- I made that assumption like, instantly in, in my head. But I mean, you, all right, you've you've come across this. What 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 are these shitheads actually saying? I don't know. I mean, I I I actually thought you would know more about this than 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 I. If you type in <laughs> avocado coffee, there's loads of images of. People, okay, people look. making coffee in avocado. Apparently, it tastes nice, which it may well. But what? Oh, fuck off! Hang on, have a hear you coffee. I have to. Oh, fuck off! I remember. I mean, I, like yeah, people have fucking dealt with avocado skins after they've hauled them out. They're flimsy fucking things. What? What? What are you trying to do? Manufacturing that into some kind of bowl or cup? That's a recipe for fucking disaster. I hope these fuckers scold themselves on a regular basis. But also, why not just put some avocado in coffee? If you like, you know, if, you like, if, you, if you like the avocado taste, then just put some, put a. But you also like the convenience of a mug. <laughs> well, that's how you know you're a square. <laughs> uh, what is it? It's a fruit, right? Yeah. It's a bean. It's a fruit. It's a nut. It's a large it's a, green nut. It's a large green nut. I'm. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I'm a professional. I know this. Okay. So it's a, it's 
Okay, well, and now I don't trust him. Avocado, <laughs> what is? <laughs> it not, it not, it not, not. The avocado is a tree. Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> If you can open a banana and get the actual banana out of the skin without peeling it, so you've just got like a, a banana condom, fill right. that with coffee. That makes sense. Then you can keep that around with you. That's way easier to carry around than avocado. You could just eat some avocado and then drink some coffee, you know, like <laughs> immediately after. They're not really, I think they're, they're kind of like strange bedfellows. I wouldn't really sit down and say, like, all right, okay, time for the morning coffee. And an avocado. I've handled fucking hundreds of the fuckers as well, and I've so many that are fucking gungy and horrible. And I, 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 yeah, I, that's I, what, I like yes. avocado, but so much of it is just absolute fucking dirge. And I just, I don't go near this stuff if I'm fucking not working anymore. Fuck that. No, that's exactly what I, I think as well. I, I'm not into. I've, I've been to fucking what would you call it, Chipotle, and I've eaten their fucking guacamole, and fuck off. <laughs> we need to talk more about Linda Pizza. <laughs> we did. Now we we, sh- we kind of hate fucking avocados for the last ten minutes. That's part of it. That's, you know, part of, part of the digression. I, well, I listen. The conclusion. Seriously, you know, we 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 have we have fun. You know, mocking people and stuff. We we don't really care. I think the the conclusion is we like avocados, but we fucking hate people. Yes. Yeah. 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 Just a friendly reminder at the. At the top end of every episode. It's like, you're welcome to come back next week, but we probably won't be any more fond of you then. Or anything else for that matter. Do you have anything else to say about uh, whatever we're talking about? Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, there's one stray kind of observation right at the end that I wanted to mention. Because one thing that's interesting about this movie, it seems to have like certain jokes that just would so not play. You know, if they made this this movie today, like, or, or if it uh, wasn't for Robin Williams, you know, doing his shtick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Well, it's not just yeah. that. I mean, well, every t- when they start finding out that Robin Williams is, you know, and this, there's like the fact y- y- you're a man, but now you're a woman, and there's like, you know, that's unheard of, and like people have this kind of revulsion to this idea of like one becoming the other, and it's like, wow, that's really interesting. I guess that was really funny then. People would right. fucking hate fuck it to death now, though. I mean, on the flip side as well, I remember the birdcage. One of the reasons I really liked about that is there's almost no issue about them being gay at all. I mean, there there is from the, the Gene Hackman side. The birdcage is about a guy is marrying a woman and he's, he's taking her to meet his parents for the first time. His parents are two men who are really, really very, very camp and own a, um, like a drag queen bar and... Her parents are Gene Hackman, and he's a senator. He's like a Republican senator. He's really sort of conservative. And they have to fool him into thinking that his parents aren't, you know, these gay liberals or whatever. Mm-hmm. But but apart from that, apart from, you know, oh, I, I hope Gene Hackman approves of us. Apart from that, there's no, there's, there's nothing, you know. You know, the guy in that, what's his name? Nathan Pepper. Lane. Nathan Lane, you know, he dresses up as a woman, and it's just no big deal. Hmm. Uh, uh, but I agree with you with Mrs. Datfa. Like, what? Yeah, why was it a big deal then, but not for Birdcage? Yeah, I don't know. It's just what. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I, I'm, I don't. I'm not really get. I don't really know what I would get on my soapbox about. It's just a, more of a stray observation. It's just one of those things. that's kind of doesn't really. It doesn't irk me per se. It's just I, I know so many people that would just fucking fly off the handle with some of that stuff. And it's, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's it's, it's, a, it's a little bit fascinating. But one thing, one thing, which is. Fucking blew my mind right at the end of the movie, right? So Robin Williams, yeah. everything's, you know, kind of okay. But, um, but he's got oh, his little TV say. show. I know, what you, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. The TV show. What? They're talking about and what, what language old, do they? What language what? do they speak in England? It's like Pakistani. Well, they do in the shops. It's like fucking, fucking hell. hell. <laughs> what on earth do they really? Pakistani. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Yeah. Oh fucking hell! That was outrageous. I was at that point. I'd like all the every when they were bringing all the stories together. It just got so sappy for me. I was kind of uncomfortable. I was like ready for the movie to end. It was just way too kind of yeah syrupy for for, for my taste. And I was I was switched off. But that I kind of just fucking caught my ear as I started getting up and doing my thing. And I was fucking. Fucking blew my fudge all over the fucking flat, and it was unbelievable. I th- I think I, you see, I wasn't really offended 
buy that. Uh, I think it's a little bit risky, but I, I thought it was funny. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't, that, that, I didn't yeah. think it was trying to be racist, uh, you know. Oh, no, but that's... Um, that, 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 but that's I was, the, like, fucking outright... Well, I mean... But, so. the, the, but the one thing I, I kind of thought was... was Made it a little bit more risky than it should have been is there is no such language as Pakistani. Well, maybe that's like, how they kind of get away with it, because it's... They, they, speak, they speak, like, Punjabi and Urdu and... All these different languages, don't they? Yes, yeah, yeah. And English. <laughs> <laughs> well, they you would know, now that they've come over here. Yeah, yeah, because no, in Pakistan, all the fucking people in their, their corner shop speak English. <laughs> just, just to make a point. Flawlessly, <laughs> I might add, with better diction than myself. All these, all these Pakistanis whispering to themselves about, oh, fucking, don't go to Miss, Mr. Smith's shop. It smells like fucking fish and chips. <sighs> I guess it's a weird observation as well, because... Would the main audience, i.e., Americans, really understand that joke? Even no, I guess I, I guess not really. It's it's not really something that they kind of. You go into a corner shop and it's run by whoever the fucking corporation put there because they're all they're all run by Sainsbury's and Tesco's, mm. right? Yeah, like, you, you don't get cor- corner shops anymore, do you? No, no, not really. No, it's it's all mini marts, really. Now, you know where they're they're in a a chain of a thousand. Yeah, and they're all kind of so homogenized and clinical. When I I come across mm-hmm. shops that are like that, which is just one dude, you know, doing it his it's own. It's awesome. Way. Yeah, at the same time, it's uh, it's some guy who doesn't have a lot of resources, and these places are like shambolic. And I've got to say, personally, and it makes me sound like a bit of a shit, but I don't I don't go for it. Uh, I don't go in. Invariably, these places are so much more expensive as well. Yeah, no, I, I love those places because I like to walk in and, and say to the guy who's reading his magazine, I like to say, I'm looking for some bread. Um, it's a type of bread that uh, I haven't seen manufactured in this country for about three years. Yep, we've got it right here. It's, <laughs> or it's like, like, I'm looking for an energy drink that isn't Monster and it isn't Red Bull. It's only available in Bulgaria. Yep, we've got it. <laughs> I'm not saying they've got everything, but they have weird stuff, and I like that. Fair but enough. also, also, you're right; it is more expensive. Yeah, but but you know, you always get a service with a smile. You, you fuck off! You don't get service with a service with a smile. No, in, defen- barely- in defense of those little corner shops, Damien, I love that you can go in there, and unlike some horrible clinical corporate place with no soul, someone might tell you to stop fucking going through the magazines. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we're, <laughs> no. we're, we're very topical. We should talk about a poo, then. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think ah, no, about fuck, fuck that, fuck that. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything to say to that. Uh, here, are, here, I have two thoughts about it. Uh, I don't care, and it's fine. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's... I, I just... I, I, yeah, I, 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 I agree. It just that feels like it kind of... People kind of demand more... Seem to demand kind of greater discussion about it. I say I don't see why something like that should. I I yeah, I, I don't understand it. And I guess people turn it because I'm you know, I'm not of the culture I couldn't possibly understand. I'm not the one being ridiculed. I've never you know, you don't see white English people ridiculed in cartoons ever. I, I you know, I guess with the the joke at the end of Mrs. Datfire, you know, which I don't think is is pretty bad, but I think if they made it now, if the same people wrote it now, it that joke wouldn't be in there. Oh, yeah, that would easily be cut, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, if the same people wrote The Simpsons now, then, well, firstly, they wouldn't, but secondly, they, they wouldn't write a poo like that. You know, it, yeah, I, I, it's it's just of its time, and it, the, the problem isn't fucking a poo, the problem is it's on season 30. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, what was acceptable 30 years ago inevitably isn't acceptable now. Um, I, I, you know, I see people's point about Apu being a stereotype. I mean, there's all the fucking Simpsons is all stereotypes. That's kind of the gag, and no, oh, whatever. I, yeah, I just don't care. The Simpsons has been disappointing me for the better part of twenty years now. We, I mean, we brought it back, guys. We brought it back to the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing I liked about Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, and again, the same thing I liked about uh, Face Off, was no attempt at a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and nor should there be. Really, fair enough. I yeah, I mean that yeah. yeah. I just thought I just respect that. I guess yeah, because obviously it was it was massive, and they left it the fuck alone. They didn't fucking milk it dry. Well, yeah, it was massive, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was fucking huge. Yeah, that's a very good point. I didn't you must that. always read the label. You must always read it well in the most delicious way. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd like a banger in the mouth? 
We don't say that here. We say sausage. <laughs> well, I think we did pretty yeah. good to wait till the hour, of, uh, Mark, to bring up any of that stuff because I thought that was what we were going to fucking get. We, 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 we'd land I, on I straight at the door. What are you talking about? I opened with that. Yeah, we didn't fucking dwell on it there. We didn't. Do you know what? I opened with it. And it didn't fucking click until right now. That's why I opened with it. I just thought it was a funny thing to say. <laughs> I must forget that I'm in the colonies now. <laughs> uh, oh, well, anything else to say about Missy Doubtfire or are we done? No, that's, that's it. I'm done. Like, he's a dangerous, dangerous man. He, shouldn't, <laughs> he should not be allowed yeah. uh, out in public unattended. Uh, and the knuckle hair has to fucking give it away, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, I imagine he's got some fucking manly hands. Well, thanks very much. Next time, we're going to be talking about Stephen King's first film, Maximum Overdrive. Okie dokie. It's awesome. It's got trucks in it and everything, and Emilio Estevez. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> A stunning endorsement yeah. again. You, yeah, all right. Bye. <laughs> no, no second take on that one, Damien. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Yep. Whatever. I didn't. I, sorry. I, I'm not even listening. Whatever. Bye. 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 Uh, I, I'm sorry. Listen. I'm re- I'm I've already stopped really recording really like ten I, minutes ago. I, you know. This is this is. I'm, I'm really happy with this episode. I'm going to go and chase the pony. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When we bye go into now. merchandising, chase the pony T-shirts. We'll be millionaires. It's it's a pony with a gay little beard with a lava lamp coming out of its ass. <laughs> Next week, fan art.